I recently bought a lab incubator from a website mocklix.com for a very good price of only Indian rupees 3545. It has an inner dimension of 12 by 12 by 12 inches with a full capacity of 28 liters. I bought it mostly for future microbiology experiment videos that will involve a lot of incubation. The product arrived in one week with no damage whatsoever. So here's the unboxing on arrival video, followed by a quick review based on my almost two months of using this incubator. So first things first, 28 liter capacity is the smallest size that a lab incubator comes in, at least in India. So I wasn't surprised at all with the small size. It has a nice powder coated grey metal body and at this price the overall finish is quite remarkable. The front door has the typical glass viewing window with a rubber lining and the incubator door locked with a chrome finish to it. There's also a L-shaped glass thermometer with a graduated arm fastened on the wall above the incubator door. The other arm containing the bulb can be seen sticking into the inner chamber through a hole. This thermometer gives the real-time temperature of the incubator chamber in Celsius degrees. We also have below the incubator door the typical control knobs and indicator lights. This is the thermostat temperature control knob with a 30 to 110 degrees Celsius graduation, although we can set it only till a maximum of 95 degrees beyond which the knob won't turn. And here's the load indicator light which turns on for a minute or so whenever the thermostat activates to bring back the temperature within the chamber to the temperature that it's set at. This is the power indicator light which basically turns on as long as the incubator is on. And this knob with a 0 to 3 graduation actually just functions as an on-off switch. The indicator power button turns on when this knob is set at 0 or 2 and turns off when it's set at 1 and 3. Simply installing the typical one-way electric switch here would have sufficed. So I don't quite get why the incubator has a complicated but virtually non-functional knob here. On top of the incubator door is pasted the seller's logo sticker with contact details in case you're interested. As we open the door, we have the inner chamber of the incubator made of aluminum, as the product described. Two aluminum shelves with adjustable heights are also included in it. Here's the thermostat probe at the bottom of the chamber. The heating element is probably enclosed beneath the chamber body. We also have two air vents on both sides of the incubator. The chamber, though small in dimension, is large enough to spaciously hold even a 1000 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, which is itself quite tall so it would be able to accommodate numerous petri dishes which are the most commonly used glassware for incubating. Now coming to the temperature sensitivity and accuracy of this 3500 rupees incubator. After the first 8 days of continuous operation of this machine, I've made certain observations. To begin with, the thermostat temperature knob setting doesn't exactly correspond to the real-time thermometer reading and also it's not very responsive at lower temperatures. 
Also, the temperature readings for a particular setting varies at every time I repeat the test. I experimented with three different temperature settings of 30 degrees, 50 degrees, and the maximum 90 degrees setting claimed by the seller as the maximum that the incubator can reach. Here's a 8 times fast forwarded video clip of the thermometer reading when the incubator is set at 30 degrees on two occasions. As you can see, in one instance, the thermometer reading goes all the way up to 35 degrees, despite the thermostat being set at 30 degrees. It comes back to 30 degrees, which is when the thermostat control sets in and the temperature rises back to about 35, and the cycle continues. On a second occasion, the thermometer reading showed a maximum of 30 degrees with a thermostat setting of 30 degrees. It went down gradually to about 25 degrees and rises back to about 30 again as the automatic thermostat springs into action. I repeated the same operation for 50 degrees Celsius again on two different occasions. In the first test, with the thermostat set at 50 degrees, thermometer reading rose to 50 degrees, went back all the way down to 40 degrees, and with the thermostat controls bringing into action, rose to a little over 50, went back down and the cycle continues. In a second test, with the same thermostat set at the same 50 degrees, the thermometer rose to a little over 40 degrees and seemed to stay put at that temperature without much change which was really weird. I did a third test with the 50 degrees setting and the temperature this time rose to a little less than 50 plummeted back to around 40 and so on. For the final test, this time at 90 degrees Celsius, which is the maximum temperature that the incubator can reach, as claimed by the seller. With the thermostat set at 90 degrees, the thermometer was barely able to reach 75 degrees Celsius, which then fell back to around 70 degrees, which then rose again to continue the cycle. In a different test, again at 90 degrees Celsius, the temperature in the first cycle this time wasn't even able to reach 75 degrees Celsius. In the second cycle, the temperature rose to almost 80 degrees, went back to a little less than 75 degrees and climbed again to almost 80 degrees Celsius.
From these video clips, we can see that the thermometer reading range for a particular temperature setting is a huge difference of up to 10 degrees before the thermostat springs into action. The real-time temperature for a particular thermostat temperature setting as reflected in the thermometer reading is also different with every test I performed. So either the temperature knob graduation is faulty or the thermometer itself is to blame. To sum up, this incubator unit bought for a price of a little over rupees 3k cannot be used for sensitive incubation that requires an accurate and constant temperature. It may perform adequately for things like drying glassware or incubating cultured organisms that tolerate a wide temperature range, but that's about it. So all in all, it was a good purchase experience in terms of the price, which is nothing less than a steel deal for a lab incubator bought online. But in terms of functional accuracy and sensitivity, this is definitely not a good option. So this is pretty much all there is about the unboxing and review of my new incubator from Moklix.com, sold by the seller SESW. Hope this video helps you in making a well-informed purchase if at all you're planning on buying one. If so, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.